So, so as I was just saying, your decentralization, control costs are caused because people don't always act in the best interest of the organization. They have their own self-interest to misrepresent uh, during the selection phase of hiring and also they have their own self-interest in undertaking behaviors after they are hired, especially if they're not being monitored. So taking that into account, control costs increase when you give people more autonomy in the organization, in a decentralized organization. And so we looked at transfer pricing as one way to try and provide a market environment between decentralized or autonomous units. And we looked at various transfer pricing mechanisms in our last lecture. What we didn't cover in detail were the two other legs of the stool. So let's uh, consider what we've got in terms of three-legged stool. We have uh, decentralization, then we have performance measurement, and we have rewards. And now the whole idea or the rationale behind the three-legged stool is that if you take one of these legs away, for example, uh, measures, then you're left with decentralization and rewards, but you have no way of attaching the rewards to any particular performance. And so the school still will fall over because as much, without measures, it's very hard to provide an incentive system. It's hard, very hard to provide rewards based on outcomes if you're not measuring the outcomes, for example. So the stool will fall over. On the other hand, if you don't have rewards and you have decentralization and measures, you decentralization decentralize, you spend a lot of money on measuring things, but there will be no incentive for people to get rewarded for performance according to those measures. So the stool will fall over again. Okay? On another scenario, you have lots of measures, you have lots of rewards, but you don't decentralize, guess what happens? You're spending a lot of money on measures, you're spending a lot of money on rewards, but you're not gaining the benefits of minimal knowledge minimizing the knowledge transfer costs. By not decentralizing, you're actually waiting for the information to come back to you as a senior manager or a regional manager or a country manager and it may be too late to act on all those decisions. You're going to have information overload. Again, the stool will fall over. So this notion of the three-legged stool encapsulates what we've basically covered in the last lecture and today's lecture. In today's lecture, we're really focusing on performance measurement and rewards. So let's have a look at some of the learning objectives for today's lecture. And one was uh, learning objective three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight, and nine, we look at under measures, we introduce the notion of return on investment as a measure and also residual income. So return on investment is the amount of profits divided by divided by the investment in an asset. So if you invest $1,000 and you get a $10 return, the return on investment is going to be 1%. Residual income is a different type of notion of return on investment. It is a, an adjusted return on investment for a minimum required capital. So you invest $1,000, you have a minimum required return of 10%, that is $100, so then anything above that becomes a residual income. And so the, these two are very popular in organizations as well as EVA, which is a very similar to residual income that you invest, um, when you invest money, you adjust the investment base for some weighted average cost of capital of the assets minus liabilities of the organization. So it's just a little more sophisticated approach to calculating a residual income. And that's quite, uh, that's used in organizations also. So looking at these, three types of measures we will talk about in today's lecture about how some of them can provide more incentives for managers to undertake myopic behavior, especially the return on investment. And so that's why organizations may want to use residual income or EVA to actually get managers to make more long-term decisions when they're making investment decisions. So that's a big key problem that organizations have. 
getting managers to make decisions in the long-term interests of the organization, not just within the term, the time frame in which the manager is employed. So we must know on average, the average tenure of a CEO in the S&P 500 is about three years, give or, give or take a few months. So the average investment organizations make, we want to have a scope of five, 10 or 15 years, depending on which industry you're in or even longer. So you want to try and get managers to think beyond their average three years in making these investment decisions. So we're gonna talk about how residual income uh, and EVA can help overcome that problem. There are other measures that we consider in today's lectures, that is measures associated with returned on assets, return on employees, and also costs, different types of cost measures they use in the organization. We'll skip over the issues of management control of multinational organizations. I think the big issue here is to do with how they actually measure different country units or regional offices in a comparable way. By doing that, you're able to compare different offices, but at the same time, you may give up, con you may cause controllability problems and in the individual offices because some different uh, offices are facing more uncertainty than others. So it's sort of a trade-off between comparability and controllability. Now, moving on to the rewards in today's lecture, we're going to briefly introduce this notion of agency costs. And if you reward people more in terms of outcomes, you've got to be careful because there's a risk component associated with achieving that outcome, especially in an uncertain environment. As the risk increases, on average, you have to compete, you have to compensate managers more for undertaking that risk. So there's that risk uh, compensation trade-off. Uh, the, the, the point here is that you, you want to reward managers for outcomes because you want to deal with that moppy behavior, the agency issue that we're going to talk about, but at the same time you're placing risk on the manager and that's why you have to compensate for it, that extra risk. If you focus rewards on inputs and processes, it might be that they have more control over those areas in the organization, so therefore you don't have to compensate managers for that much in undertaking that risk. Although you give up, you give up that incentive effect of getting the manager to get that outcome, and ultimately it is the outcomes, the outcomes that managers produce that actually drive revenues or sales in the organization. Finally, we're going to look at levers of control, learning objective nine, and that's from Simon's framework of diagnostic control, boundary, boundary controls, uh, belief systems, and interactive controls, diagnostic controls of social performance measurement, providing feedback on how the organization is going, uh, boundary controls associated with rules and procedures, the formal side of control in the organization, what you're allowed to do, what you can't do. Belief systems associated with the culture in the organization, what, what is the norms and values in the organization, the organizational culture. And finally, interactive controls, how information systems are used interactively to achieve the organization strategy. In some ways, these, the first three type of controls are definable, but you go into the organization and you actually, you can see diagnostic controls, you can see boundary systems, and you can get a sense of the belief systems by talking to people about what's going on. What is more difficult is getting a handle on what are interactive controls, because different people may use these controls differently. It may not be a common way of using controls in one organization. So interactive controls sometimes may relate to diagnostic systems or how boundary systems are used or with the use of belief systems. So there's a common way of using diagnostic controls interactively. It becomes a norm in the organization. So in some ways, 
uh, I am painting the picture that the levers of control, the first three are really definable. The fourth one, interactive control, is a way of some, how some of the first three are used, plus uh, just a different way in which the whole control package is managed. So there we have uh, the end of the three-legged stool. We're going to talk, talk uh, introduce decentralization last week, week before, and now today we're talking about performance measurement systems and rewards. So see you in the lecture. Thank you very much.